If you've listened to as much bad self-defense advice as I have, you've probably heard the line, don't punch in a street fight. The argument is that punching with your bare fists risks breaking the small bones in your hand and that you should instead use palm strikes. But as with most self-defense advice, it's clear nobody's actually thought this through. In reality, there are a few situations where you might prefer a palm strike over a punch, but punches are going to be as good or better the vast majority of the time. I'm going to explain why punches are better than you think, why palm strikes are worse than you think, and in what situations you actually could use palm strikes. Now, being afraid to hurt yourself when you throw a strike is understandable, but palm strikes don't solve this problem. If I make perfect contact with the heel of my hand, great. If I make less than perfect contact, I jam my fingers and hyperextend my wrist, which is not great. Palm strikes just mean you get to break your distal radius instead of your metacarpals, which is not better, just in case you're wondering. And note the majority of the surface area of your palm strike is a bad area to make contact with. Now, some people might argue that they would never make contact with the wrong part of the hand. They're too skilled for that. But if they always hit with perfect precision and alignment, then they probably wouldn't break their fist either. In reality, the only way to guarantee that you don't get injured is to not get in fights. And sure, palm strike injuries are much less common than punch injuries, but that's because palm strikes are less common than punches. And they're less common because it's an awkward, unintuitive motion that is used by neither complete beginners nor trained fighters. It's merely something that's talked about in the small sliver of the population that's an expert in self-defense but doesn't actually spar. If people did spar, they would quickly figure out that the palm strike is awful to throw. Trying to get the heel of my hand to point forward with my arm fully extended is a literal pain. My wrist does not want to bend that way and getting it into that position while maintaining the kind of looseness necessary for a speedy strike is borderline impossible. If I strike with my hand in a relaxed neutral position, what does that look like? A fist! Not only are fists more comfortable to throw, but they're easier to land. A palm strike has roughly double the surface area of a fist, which makes slipping a strike through my opponent's guard a monumental undertaking. Anyone that's sparred both with and without boxing gloves knows how hard it is to get that thing through a tight guard. And boxing gloves at least have a rounded front that you can wedge through gaps. Palm strikes can't wedge through anything. Plus, we have the issue of reach. Shaving roughly two inches of reach off of each arm is going to put you at a noticeable disadvantage. Fighting is a game of inches. Small distances can be the difference between a clean knockout and a complete miss. Whether you hurt yourself from landing a strike doesn't matter if you can't land a strike. Now admittedly, if I throw a full power shot at someone's frontal bone, I'll probably break my hand. But throwing a full power round kick at someone's knee means I'll probably break my shin. Does this mean kicks are useless too? No, it means you shouldn't be throwing full power shots at moving targets. This is something that most actual fighters already know because throwing anything with 100% power requires a disproportionate amount of time and concentration. And in the likely event you miss, you're off balance and overextended. I'm probably not throwing anything over 50% unless I have a clear, obvious target and punching at 100% is never necessary. Light controlled punches are a lot less likely to break your hand even if you hit someone in the frontal bone. These light punches are then used to set up the hard shots. Winging barehanded power shots at someone that has their head down is something untrained people do. Already I hear a thousand nerds furiously typing in the comments, but Mike Tyson broke his hand in a street fight and he knows how to punch. I hear this all the time and it seems like nobody knows the actual story. First of all, he didn't break his hand on some random guy. He was fighting another elite heavyweight boxer. Second of all, the punch that broke his hand also knocked his opponent out cold. Tyson was actually afraid he had died. Punching hard enough to hurt his hand also hurt his opponent. Imagine that. Third of all, Tyson had a mild hairline fracture. His break only mattered because his hands were worth millions of dollars. If you or I came in with that injury, the doctor probably wouldn't even bother putting a cast on it. Fourth of all, this all happened to someone that only trains to fight in boxing gloves, which don't even let you make a fist correctly. So quit bringing up the Mike Tyson story. All it shows is that punching works well enough to win street fights. The next thing you need to understand is that firmness and lack of cushion in your fists is not a bug. It's a feature. The protruding knuckles mean you can open up cuts on your opponent's face, and the rigidity allows you to do more soft tissue and bone damage. If adding a meat cushion to a strike protects you from injuries, it will also protect your opponent from injuries. 
If I hit someone with my sword, I might gouge the blade on their skull. I know, I'll cover it in padding so my sword is nice and safe. You missed the point of the weapon. Get it? Point? Major League Baseball players break their bats all the time, but they're not going to switch over to using pool noodles. Sure, pool noodles won't ever shatter on impact, but they also lack the rigidity and hardness to make the ball go anywhere. When you make something stiffer, you generally also make it more brittle. No sex jokes in the comments. Bam. Blocked, blocked, blocked. None of you are free of sin. The lack of cushion in your fists is the thing that makes them useful in the first place. Now, if you've thought about it enough, you could probably tell that punches are better than palm strikes even if you know nothing about martial arts. And that's based on the simple fact that everyone makes fists. When completely untrained people act on instinct, they throw punches. When toddlers are mad at you, they throw punches. Granted, they're throwing awful punches and making awful fists, but they're still making fists. Punching is the way that humans, and especially males, naturally and instinctively fight. If that was a horrible and dangerous way to throw strikes, evolution probably would have selected that trait out. A broken hand during prehistory is not easily fixed, and your odds of reproducing would drastically decrease. Despite this, making fists seems to be pretty well coded into our genes. And scientists that have actually studied the evolution of human anatomy have come to a general consensus that men's hands are designed to make fists. They're not optimized to make fists because they still have to be good at doing a ton of other things, but they're not bad at making fists. As biology professor David Carrier put it, evolutionarily, an individual that can strike with a clenched fist can hit harder without injuring themselves. That's just how I imagine professors talk. Carrier's findings suggest that a fully buttressed fist can safely strike with 55% more force than an unbuttressed fist and 200% more than an open hand slap. So according to an actual expert on the subject, the palm strike people have their biology completely backwards. Now, I know I've been dissing on palm strikes a lot, but they can be useful in certain scenarios. The most obvious use for them is on the ground. If I'm in top position, palm strikes work fine because my opponent is beneath me instead of in front of me. This means that my wrist gets to be at a much more comfortable angle. Even if I'm on my feet, I can turn an overhand or a long distance hook into a slap and still have my hand at an angle that doesn't hyperextend my wrist or compromise my reach. Obviously, these strikes won't do the same amount of tissue damage that a punch would, but my open hand means I can more easily transition to a collar tie or a guard teardown. So there are uses for palm strikes in a fight. The problem is that most of the people advocating for palm strikes don't know enough about fighting to identify what these uses are. But it's important to note that as a general rule, punches are better, whether you're wearing a glove or not. And remember, the biggest factor in whether or not you can fight is not your hand position. It's whether or not you've practiced fighting. Mike Tyson is stupid because he broke his hand in a fight. I could have beaten that heavyweight professional boxer easily because palm strikes. All the stupid alignment and self-defense tricks in the book aren't going to save you from someone that's better at fighting. And in the danger and chaos of a street fight, hurting my little fingies from repeatedly punching my opponent in the face is a good problem to have. As an afterthought, I realized that people are going to say, Oh, why didn't you punch someone in the head to prove your theory? Well, I couldn't get anyone bigger than me scheduled to line up with mine, so Kaylin's going to live out every girlfriend's dream and punch me in the head over and over. I outweigh Kaylin by 50 pounds, and she has just the teeniest, tiniest hands. Make a fist, Kaylin. Look at the fist sizes. Look at that. It's adorable. If she's not going to break her wrist, you're not going to break yours, buddy. Punch me in the head. Oh, okay. Ugh, science! For science! Ah! Oh. That's unpleasant, and she's very small. Is your hand okay? Ah! And the Oscar goes to... Try palm strikes? If you wanna. There's no reason. Ow, actually, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> she threw two of those! I wasn't even planning on trying palm strikes. She just wanted to hit me in the face in a different way. I mean, wouldn't you? Look at this kid, he's an idiot. I bet that he can't even fight. Cause my Krav Maga skills could totally kill. Only my school does martial arts right.